Good evening, everybody. You know, I can never get like five minutes without something banging or dinging. What was that? Uh, text message. Uh, anyway, so I turned my phone on silent. This may sound strange, but I'm going to do an ASMR video about my pillowcase because I just got done doing my laundry and it occurred to me my pillowcase actually tells a story. My voice and um, allergies here. Okay, that's why I'm a little scratchy and whispering. Besides, if we're going to do pillow talk, maybe whisper is more appropriate. I don't Let's try to get the voice lubricated a little bit. What might you ask could possibly be interesting about a freshly laundered pillowcase? Well, I'll tell you. When you see it, you'll understand. I can tell you stories because my pillowcase looks like this. It has all different species of fish on it and angling and things like that. And because I am essentially an obsessive fisherman, um, I can tell you a little bit about the various species and my own fishing experiences just a bit. Not in great detail. I'll do that in another video someday. Um, but I'll tell you what these species are and um, discuss them a little bit. Because there are several represented here. Okay. Um, let's take this guy first as a start. That guy there is called a crappie. And crappie are a real nice size panfish. They're about the size typically of my hand, but they can get quite a bit bigger. And they can get up to a couple of pounds. They make very nice fillets. And they're a schooling fish that are very aggressive. They'll attack little jigs and little flies and little mealworms. They have a small mouth so you can bait fish or lure fish successfully for them. They have a small mouth, see? They're also sometimes called paper mouth because the hook pulls out so easy. So they're sometimes a little hard to catch but they're a schooling fish. So often if you catch one, you could catch 10, okay? I put one of those fabric softening things in the laundry. I have to check and see if this smells fresh and good. Ooh, it really does. It doesn't smell fishy, I can tell you that. Smell that, okay? Well, you can't, but I can do it for you, and I can tell you it's very fresh. Um, so yeah, crappie, it, it's a good scrappy, scrappy fish that tastes very good when filleted. What's another one here? Um, this guy up here is called a uh, pickerel. Okay. And there's another kind of angry looking prehistoric fish called a pike or a musky also, musculinch. All of them, actually I think this is a pike, I'm sorry I got it wrong. Uh, the reason I'm not sure is because that fish I've never caught. They're an east coast fish and I'm a west coast fish fishermen. So those are in lakes in Canada and 
east of the Rockies primarily, especially in the northern states. So I don't know too much about fishing for them other than they can be viciously aggressive. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a muskie. Yeah, the, the musculange. That's this guy. Now those have really sharp teeth and uh, they get very big. And they can, you know, really tear, tear your hand up if you don't know how to handle them. If you catch one and get it on board your boat. Once again, I have not caught one personally. I've seen them on fishing shows and things like that. So, I would like to catch one someday. Um, just, you know, to have a variety of... There's a saltwater fish very similar to a muskie. Very similar to that muskie. Do you know what fish that is I'm talking about? It's called a lingcod. And a lingcod is a very aggressive, predatory fish with big, sharp teeth in its mouth and a very bony jaw. And they're on the west coast. I've caught lings before when going out on the ocean in Monterey Bay with my friend Walter. And uh, they're a very hard fighting fish. And um, the meat is superb. The, the fillets you get from a ling cod are very excellent. Unless you have an allergy to fish because they do eat reef fish and they hang around reefs so it could be dangerous if you have fish allergies now here is a fish that is called a brown trout right there and it looks a lot also like a brook trout okay and um, that's a premium sport fisherman's kind of fish of course, they taste very good, fried up in a pan with a little breading and uh, a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper, other seasonings. Excellent eating fish, and they're fun to catch. You can fly fish for them. Oh yeah, they show this as a fly fishing guy there, catching him on a fly. So. I just watched a movie called A River Runs Through It. Very excellent film about fly fishing and a true story, by the way, and kind of an autobiography by a guy telling his family's story. And um, his dad was a preacher and a fly fisherman and taught him I recommend the film it was produced by Robert Redford, you know, Mr. Rocky Mountain Guy, Butch Cassidy. What else do we have here? I'm going to show you the brown trout again because I want to tell you one of my bucket list things that I haven't done yet. I've caught a brown before and I've caught brook trout before that look kind of similar to a brown. But one trout I've never caught is called a golden trout. They only live in lakes that are about elevations higher than 8,000 feet. So um, small, uh, beautiful, pristine, clear water lakes up in the Sierra Nevada mountains in places like that. I think the Rocky Mountains also. And uh, perhaps some regions of Alaska and Canada. And, um, excuse me my voice, this will be a half whisper, half soft spoken video. The golden trout 
is a very, very careful fishing technique because they spook. I can't get the top on there. There we go. They spook very easy and they're only in very clear water. Um, they don't get real big, you know, because they're in those high lakes where there's not much to feed on. So they're probably only, you know, this big or so. What, eight, ten inches, something like that. So, um, even a six inch one would probably be considered a good catch, you know. Um, if you got down to four and a half inches, then, um, then your partner, no, never mind that, uh, I wouldn't even want to eat a, a golden trout because they're rare. What I would really want to do is catch one on a barbless hook that would not injure it in any way. And then I would want to just pull it out of the water gently, take a picture of it, and release it back into that wild, pristine water lake that it came from so it could continue to swim around and be happy and catch little nymphs and things in there or mosquito larva or whatever they're feeding on there's not a lot to eat up there but they survive and do okay what is another fish here that i have caught how about a course as i showed you the other day or in a recent video on my thermometer, largemouth bass. Here we go, a largemouth bass. He's chasing one of those lures that has two pieces on it. It's like a little feather thing and a little flasher. I've caught quite a few largemouth bass in my day. They're fun to catch, but they give up pretty fast when they fight. They'll fight really hard at first and then kind of give up. So, and I don't think they're as tasty as a lot of other fish. It's more of a game fish that's fun to catch. Uh, I often throw them back after taking a picture and they're very healthy. They're never injured because they're always lip hooked, you know, no blood. And by the way, there's no nerves in that part of their mouth where they get hooked. It doesn't hurt them. The fighting they do is, uh, you know, the aversion instinct, the escape instinct. So you're not being cruel to the fish, okay? I know the biology of the structure of the fish. So I'm not just rationalizing for you that this is not a cruel sport. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, we have, of course, one of my all-time favorites. We have the rainbow trout. And a rainbow trout can be in a lake or it can be in a river. I've caught many in both, including catching rainbow trout in small streams high in the mountains where you go from pool to pool hiking up a stream casting from down below so they don't see you you can only catch one that way the rest get spooked and won't bite so then you have to hike up to the next pool when you're doing that kind of fishing whereas in a lake you can sometimes catch multiple ones in one spot. There's even a version in California um, of rainbow trout called a cutthroat trout. It has a little red spot on its lower below the gills, and they're both freshwater and saltwater. Uh, they'll go out to sea and they'll come back in to a river or a lake they can get to from the ocean up a river. But, by the way, there's also a species of trout 
in the rainbow trout family that is a lot like a salmon. And that species is called a steelhead trout. And we see one here. This is e either a steelhead trout or maybe they're representing a silver salmon. I'm not quite sure which because they look similar, but I'm guessing that it's a, a steelhead trout because all the other species on here are freshwater. So I'm just going to do by process of deduction uh, that this is probably a river run steelhead trout. Now, the steelhead acts very similar to the salmon because they spawn in fresh water up rivers but then they go out to sea for the rest of their lives and feed out there and so they get very large. It's by far the largest species of trout and very prized by game fishermen because they can get up to 20 pounds or even bigger uh, they can get huge, although typically a six or seven pound one would be a really nice size. I have caught steelhead trout in a small river in California and in a larger river up in Washington State and in Oregon. Um, so great game fish and they taste very good if they've been eating the right things. Um, yeah, and unlike a salmon, uh, with salmon, when they spawn, uh, the little fingerlings, the little baby fingerlings, get bigger, whatever ones survive, and go out to sea. And they only come back to spawn in the, in the river once, and then they die, which is kind of a drag, you know? It'd be a drag if you uh, like got to make love with your partner one time in life and then immediately you died. That would be really a bummer. It'd be kind of like, hey, I kind of like this making love thing, but I don't get to repeat it because I'll be dead. Okay, so I don't envy the life of a salmon very much. You know, first you have to survive being a fingerling, right? which the vast majority get eaten by bigger fish, then you have to go out to the ocean and um, fend off, you know, uh, bigger fish that will eat you out there, and seals and sea lions that will eat you and all that kind of thing. You know, fishermen never catch steelhead in the ocean, hardly ever, so I don't know where they go, but they don't seem to get caught much out there, only in the rivers. Um, but anyway, back to salmon. Okay, so the salmon, then they go back to the river where they were born, to pretty much the same spot. Now, how do they know that? There's dozens of rivers they could go up, and um, they go up the river where they were born, the same spot and they spawn, you know, and then they die off. Bummer. It's nice for bears, not so good for the salmon. Um, you don't want to catch one when they're ready to spawn. The meat's no good anymore. You have to catch them down lower in the river before they get to that spot. Um, but with a steelhead, unlike the salmon, they go back and forth several times to spawn and then go back to the ocean again. They don't go as far up the rivers. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But they have a better life, I think, because they get to spawn multiple times instead of just once. Of course, the whole spawning thing seems a little bit... Um, unsatisfying if you're a fish anyway, you know, because if you know how it works, uh, the female 
uh, squirts the eggs down into some gravel. And then the male comes along and, you know, fertilizes the eggs uh, in the gravel. But the two fish don't really, you know, have any intimate erotic contact. So that all seems a little unsatisfying to me. So I'm glad I wasn't born a fish, aren't you? You know, you live a tough life. You make love, so to speak, one time, but you have no contact doing it, and then you die. Okay, that's not much fun. Be glad you were not born as a... Let me see if there's any other species on here. I think we've covered them all. I had to pause again for the musical clock. It's one of... I'm sorry to be redundant and to keep telling you, but I have about five different major background sounds that come on here uh, randomly every few minutes. Okay, the clock's not random, so I could plan around it if I uh, always look at the times, but there was one more fish we didn't see I found, and that's this guy, and he's called a walleye fish. A walleye, that one, see. And a, a walleye, I have to go back to whispering, losing my voice from the um, allergies to air quality in the Sacramento Valley. So we'll do pillow talk with the pillowcase. The walleye fish is um, another eel. so I don't fish for them, but I know it is a prized game fish. And on the East Coast, they like to go ice fishing for walleyes, you know, up on those northern lakes that freeze over. Um, they wait until there's a thick layer of ice, and um, then they go out and cut big holes in the ice catch walleyes and other kinds of fish, but you can catch them in the summertime too. I told you I was going to do a climate change ASMR video. One interesting tidbit I was just reminded of when I was thinking about ice fishing. Uh, we were told that all the lakes would stop freezing over in the winter time, and the Great Lakes would never freeze over ever again, but last winter and the winter before and the winter before were close to record years for freezing over the Great Lakes, especially winter before last, when almost the entire lakes froze over. Um, you can go back and Google it and uh, look at the maps if you don't believe me. Um, people hadn't seen anything like it in decades, and they were out on the lakes visiting ice caverns and things. But anyway, that's way off topic, and no, I'm not a global warming denier. The globe has been warming for 10,000 years, and I'm sure it will continue for another, well, I'm not sure about that, but anyway, um, you know, that's a topic for another day. Let's just say I'm into the science and not the politics and rhetoric. So I hope you enjoyed my fish picture pillowcase. Because when I go to bed with this pillowcase, I dream about fishing. Of course, I have other interesting dreams too, but I just noticed the fringe part of the pillowcase, the, this part is like water, you know, like waves, ocean, lake. See there? I think that's kind of interesting. And, um, yeah, that's about it. I could tell you a lot of fishing stories, but that would be a topic for another day.
and another video. So for now, I'll just say, um, you know, don't ASMR and drive, folks. All right. Uh, take care, everybody.